god, guys. So happy to see you here. This is Maria Meliora, and, um, your life. <laughs> what happened during these past two months will probably is worth discussing in a different video if you would like. If you'd like some Q&A or whatever, like get to know me or any kind of more chatty video or maybe live stream, please let me know in the comments below. But first things first, today we're going to talk about perfumes that we're never, ever, ever getting back together. Um, I gave them a fair shot. I never buy perfumes to hate them. <laughs> I'm sure like you don't too. Uh, but sometimes, actually not sometimes, pretty often I buy them blindly and it's a, like a roulette, right? You never know if it's going to work out for you or not. I'll start with one that I think I already mentioned, but now I'm finally ready to get rid of it from my collection. So this is a perfume fail from Guerlain. This is Black Perfetto uh, La Petite Robe Noir. So this is uh, a de parfum version. They have a Eau de Toilette. Uh, which it has also sort of like pink roses, sort of like pink flowers here. They are noticeably different and a lot of people say that if you do like black licorice and you like this kind of like leathery licorice gourmand that has a little bit of this kind of wet leather feel to it and not too sweet, not too syrupy, uh, that Black Perfecto is the thing. A lot of people also um, give it the um, sort of the comparison that it's a little bit gothic due to the sort of the the composition that it has uh, that it has some cherry notes again some smoked leather some black licorice um, I can testify that all of the above, above are there but to be honest I just don't like black licorice and every time I buy a perfume that contains this note I usually get rid of it and it's, it's something that I would like in theory, but don't really like wearing. So I've been uh, giving away some of the decants of this perfume. And at this point, I think there's about 10... I can't really see through it. It's a black mm, bottle. <laughs> yeah, the bottle is just beautiful. I mainly bought it because of the bottle and sort of the gothic flair that people described in the comments. Uh, but even though the packaging, I would say, is just perfect, it's... It's beautiful. It's very much like the collector in me wants to keep it, but I will never wear it. I already gave, gave away two thirds of this 30 ml bottle, and I think I should just like sell the leftovers so somebody can enjoy enjoy it not as a decant, but like as a leftover in the bottle. So, black licorice unfortunately goes into the black list of of notes for me. Every, like I tried it so many times, including what we're gonna talk about <laughs> La Little Olympica. She's known for adding black licorice into her perfume compositions and the classic one I had gave it away something Mont Blanc I think also gave it away and this is another one with this Lalita Olympica Lim Limpica Nectar and this is such a syrupy never-ending syrupy hell for me. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of perfumes that, you know, sort of like Britney Spears, like something that is synthetic, syrupy, caramel kind of stuff. N really not my cup of tea. And I was kind of hoping for a little bit of more magic because the, again, the bottle. It's a fetish inducing bottle. But it's just not there like the depth the the breadth the op the opening any kind of complexity is just not there for me it doesn't open up on me at all so i gave away a decant to a friend who really likes sweet gourmand perfumes just to let her try it but mm -mm. tried to wear it a couple of times and this is just too flat too nothing special for me so we have here 30 mil, 30 mil, so I think at this point it's like 25. Mm -mm. This is a no-no, and I think at this point I'll have to kind of curb uh, my exploration of Lolita Limpica because just nothing quite fits with that brand for me, even though I love how magically 
fairy tale their marketing is and their bottles at least used to be but the smell just doesn't really land with me unfortunately the third one I'm gonna show you today is something that again you see you'll see the trend <laughs> I bought for the bottle I think the form factor of this is just beautiful, absolutely magical, kind of snow white, fairy tale like potion y. And it is called Black Excess Potion. I do like this packaging a lot. And I made a 5 ml decan for myself when I was traveling in Europe during the winter, mind you, before the whole craziness started with the lockdowns and quarantines. Um, and I just, I wore, I wore it over and over and over and I just still couldn't get anything memorable to stick with me. To me, it's just a, maybe a little bit more balanced. This is just syrupy to, to the max, in my opinion. The Black Excess Potion by Pacaraban, I would say it's more wearable sweet fragrance, but it's just sweet. You know, like, it's not... It doesn't have any kind of notes or plum liquor, you know, like plum wine or dried cherries or anything that would give me a bit, bit of a more heavy kind of late night old-fashioned drink, you know, sitting in a library kind of feel. It still lacks depth in my opinion, but it's a very pleasant sweet perfume. Um, it's just not memorable and the only thing that I, I find really appealing about it is the bottle but I tried and I'm, I'm just not gonna wear it and I'll be honest I do have quite a few heavy perfumes in my collection and if if I do wear gourmand I want it to be iridescent I want it to be kind of rotating and moving and opening up and this is not doing it for me so this one is leaving my collection as well Again, <laughs> same story here. Bought it for the bottle and reasonably favorable reviews online. So this is Cherio. I think the, I think I'm saying it correctly. Cherio, Cherio, Cheriol, Imperial Sapphire, Sapphire. I think in English that would be. Um, and the bottle is pretty good. I actually would say that. The way it's photographed, it's, it photographs better than it is in real life, that's what I'm trying to say. So it's a dark blue glass with gold accents and again, I find these kind of tricks a little bit cheap, you know, cheapening the perfume, but for, for some people it really might be worth it. So there is a little ring that comes, sits on the neck basically of the perfume and you can wear it as a ring, you can wear it like as part of the necklace, whatever you prefer. It has some blue crystals on it, but again, like all of these kind of little um, trinkets are cute, but I'm not sure it really has its place outside of children's perfumery. I don't know, like I'm not sure that th this piece of jewelry is really wearable for, for, for an adult, to be honest. About the perfume itself, it's supposed to be this kind of um, representing the, the blue, right? Like the gemstone sapphire. And it was launched in 2012. And if we look at into the notes, I'm, there's a reason why I'm doing that. I'll tell you just in a sec. Um, the heart incorporates Turkish rose, Indian jasmine, orchid blossoms. Uh, while the base caresses Indonesian patchouli, musk, and sandalwood. Anyway, I didn't really find any of these beautiful, classical, kind of heavy evening fragrance notes in it. What I actually feel is a very delicate, a little bit burned, a little bit smoky, I would say, caramel. This is not a realistic caramel scent, but this is this kind of like vanilla plus amber plus some of the maybe resins, um, wearable resinous caramel scent that I find. I actually do dislike synthetic caramelly scents a lot. I'm not a big fan of Starbucks style, you know, caramel latte um, scents. But this one is actually something that I could wear, it reasonably enjoyed wearing. 
The problem is that I wore probably 5 mil of it and I realized it still lacks depth. And I'm not really a caramel kind of girl, so I think I would better find a better home for it. The bottle is beautiful. Again, I would say it's not as beautiful as some of like the very, very high-end niche. And let me show you an example. I do have a soft spot for like old school luxury. And this is something that like is just forever. Like this is a forever luxury combination. It's like heavy gold with blue. But there is, in real life, there is no comparison about the quality of the make of the bottle of Juliet Has a Gone Liquid Illusion, which is blue with gold, and um, Imperial Sapphire, um, Sapphire, I guess, uh, if I wanted to translate that, from Chariol. It's just a little less less attention to detail, though nothing really pokes at me, nothing really looks poorly done. It's just not as intricately and exquisitely made as this bottle. So I would think that would be a decent gift for somebody who loves caramelly, ambery, vanilla scents that are not too loud, that tend to sit close to the skin and almost create some kind of like a, like a warm blanket. But they don't scream at anyone, they don't overwhelm people around you. So that would be an interesting Mm, subject to explore at least like one cent that you keep in mind because they're not very expensive but for me it's just again as I said with the previous ones and this one it's just not going as deep or as vibrant or as diverse as I, as I would prefer and in general I have plenty of skin like ambery vanilla scents and this is not by any means my favorite so by the way, if you're interested, all of these scents are going to be on my Mercari, so you can you can get them for a really, really cheap price there if you're curious. Uh, the next one, uh, I bought into the hype for sure. So this is Madonna, Madonna Naked, I think, it's true, true or Dare Naked. I had the original Madonna that was in the white, um, I think in the white bottle, and that was a very milky, tuberose heavy scent. Uh, back then, it was like years ago, I didn't know that I was hypersensitive to tuberose as a note. All I knew that there, there were certain perfumes that would smell like a migraine, like a headache to me, and this turns out is the tuberose. So basically, almost no perfumes that have a central tuberose note in them work for me because you know it's not really worth it as beautiful as the note is having a prolonged headache it's just it kills it for me so I got rid of that one pretty fast the naked promised us one of the best affordable chocolatey scents on the market and also the the bottle testify it's beautiful it's very much one of the one of the better ones that you can get for like 20 30 bucks also hard to get so i ordered mine from canada absolutely beautiful form factor very promising notes i am looking for a good coffee slash chocolate scent but i'm yet to find one that would really deliver so this i would say if you actually love Starbucks and all of those flavored lattes that they make, this could be a winner for you. I'm personally a coffee snob. I do not add any flavors to my coffee and I do prefer the smell of a very freshly uh, grind uh, coffee beans and you know like this like fresh coffee smell. I do not take any substitutes for that. I don't even drink drip coffee. It has to be the French press or a, some kind of espresso drink. I don't know why. Like, just I, I don't like any flavors in my coffee. It's very rare that I would even get a mocha, and and even then I would probably ask for like the t -t -t teeny tiny amount of chocolate to be added. So this is more of a Starbucks type of chocolatey, syrupy caramelly scent rather than actual chocolate. It's cute, it's adorable, but it's not my story. You already, by now you probably noticed that anything that is kind of more like mainstream sweetness 
I don't really like as much. Like my favorite type of sweetness is either skin-like tonka bean, um, some forms of amber and vanilla, not all, just some, just a few things. I love pink pepper, something like, well, we'll talk about favorites in the next video. Now we're talking about the fails and the perfumes that I have to let go. The next one is actually another attempt at chocolate, and this is an indie perfume. I probably talked about it before, but I'll repeat it again, because in case you want to try it, you have a a chance right now to get it for real cheap from me. This is Mama Jo from Ganache Parfums. Uh, so this, as far as I know, is an indie perfumer who makes a lot of very realistic gourmand, like at almost edible scents. So this is as close as, it, as I ever got to cacao, like to a cacao drink, you know. It's like that chocolate powder that you, you mix with milk and you... It's, yeah, like it's like liquid chocolate. But the powder, not dark chocolate, not chocolate candy. It's the, the powder that you put in your mocha or like on top of coffee or on top of cakes and things like that. Um, it's really realistic, it's very believable. I would say it's also quite long lasting, but it's so realistic that it kind of <laughs> took me by surprise. Like, I prefer my perfumes not to smell too realistically as something. It's fine if it's a very realistic lily or rose, but when it comes, with, comes to food, um, not sure. I I would go for like a hundred percent believability, you know. <laughs> so for those of you who love liquid chocolate, hot chocolate, who love that chocolate powder, this is as good as it gets. So if any of you actually are looking for those edible gourmandy sweet scents, take a look at the Ganache Parfums. Um, I think I don't know if it's he or she, uh, but they have. That person has a little website where they sell their fresh mixes. They usually have limited batches. And I managed to find this one on Mercari because somebody was selling some of their backups. I was very curious about it. I did confirm to myself that it's a truly good indie perfume house. But it's just not my kind of gourmand. So that I'm more than happy to give to someone who actually loves this type of scent because it's really, really high believability, high quality reproduction of hot chocolate drink. Um, next one, okay, this one was close. A fairly new per perfume addition to my collection and ugh, what a disappointment. I don't know, one of the bloggers in, in the sort of Russian speaking sphere that I watch um, was boasting about it as one of the cheap perfumes that she would never ever let go, that she will always have in her collection because she said it had such an unusual and long-lasting trail and it changed in time and she got so many compliments on it. So this is Judith Leiber um, Night. It's a black one. First things, not a big fan of the packaging. The, the form factor overall is fine, but the lid is super plastic with plasticky huge crystals. If you like the bling to the point of kitsch or camp, go for it. Not my aesthetic. If, if they were at least real, like as crystals, that would be fine. But the plasticky huge crystals, uh, I wouldn't say that that would make a good gift. But a gift for yourself, if you don't really care, that might be fine. So. This is a sort of a typical, not too sweet, but semi-sweet, fruity floral. This is all I can say. It doesn't open up on me. It doesn't really migrate or change into anything. It's just one of those super forgettable, fruity, semi-sweet florals. That's all I can say. It's not purely gourmand. It's not purely floral. It's not purely fruity. It's just very forgettable scent in my book. And I have so many beautiful, way more complex and 
elegant intricate sense that I just don't see myself ever wearing it rather than just using it as a like you know towel or a freshener so if anybody wants it for like real cheap <laughs> I'm happy happy to share